Well, it's a beautiful day in Oklahoma. Sun shining, wind's not blowing. So, in my messy shop here, um, working on a TD-15 injector. Now this is out of the TD-15-151. This is basically the, is that the right one? Yeah. This is basically the injector uh, body. So what goes into it is you have the injector nozzle. It's just a small, I can take this apart here for you to show you. This one is, is wore out. See, the, the, if you can see it, the top of that is supposed to be pretty much flush with this body. Now that's the, that's the little nozzle itself, but to get this apart, you can actually push it down and pop that off of the spring. It's got a little hole where the nozzle comes through. But this is the nozzle. This one had been rusted pretty badly. It had been sitting for, it's been sitting for about 30 years in a bucket. And I didn't realize they were getting rusty. So this is the piece that basically seats. Now what I've done is I've taken a little bit of lapping compound and I've spun this. Now it's probably not going to work, but we're going to give it a try. Um, if it does, that's going to be great. If it doesn't, well, I've got more in the dozer that I can try to uh, get out and work on. But I, I think I can actually get these nozzles. They're, they're pretty pricey. I think they're about 200 bucks a piece. Um, there are a few available. But anyway, this is the injector body. I'm gonna blow this out a little bit with some air. So back when I was in Votech, uh, we had some spare injectors. We've got two TD-15-151, one for parts. So when I was in Votech, back when I was about 16 years old, it's been a few years, I actually took uh, six of these injectors and I ran them through. We had an injector tester. We had a pretty good instructor that let us take, bring in projects like that, and that was kind of cool. So basically we brought in some projects and I brought in those injectors. And what I, what I ended up doing is taking the best of the six I could find and uh, we we put those in the dozer and they worked okay, but there was a couple that were marginal. Um, should have had new injectors in them. But these have a ceiling washer on each side of the nozzle. Then this little spacer. Actually, I was having trouble with this injector leaking and then I realized that this, this spacer had a crack in it. And when I went to, I spread it out with a pair of needle or a pair of snap ring pliers it just snapped so that's I think where I was getting an external leak it was leaking up around the outside of this part here so what I'm going to do I've got another washer we've got another spacer I'm going to actually turn this over upside down shove these in there and you can see it goes all the way out to the end so now we've got one more washer that goes, and I don't know what, I don't know if these are any good or not. These may leak too. They shouldn't leak. They should kind of compress down and seal, but that goes in. Then we've got
This could be where I had a leak right here. This is kind of rusty. So I'm going to go ahead and put it together like it is. Um, from the factory, these are supposed to have a special seal that goes in here, keep dirt out of them, but they don't do a whole lot. So basically, you put that together. There's not really an adjustment on these. There's, I think when the nozzles wore out, you just replace the nozzle. It comes with a new spring and seat. So, excuse me. Um, but you can see this line I've got hooked up here. This is for my injector tester. And I'm going to set you here for a minute while I tighten these up. And I'm not really going, <laughs> I'm not really worried about um, torque or anything like that. I'm just going to try to be even with how I tighten them up because you want these to seat pretty straight. Because this seals all, this, this seals the deal. You tighten these up, you're pushing everything down. Um, those ceiling rings are tightening up. Let me get a ruler right quick. So what I can do is measure about an inch and three thirty seconds there. About an inch and an eighth there. So this side needs to come down just a little bit more. Like I say, just snug them down. Probably 30, 35 pounds of torque would be enough. I'm gonna say. And I haven't got this thing set up the way I should have. I, I need to mount it to a table. you got to be careful using it in a vise and uh, I'm going to use some power service clean diesel don't well, I think that's the wrong lid don't need a whole lot um, just put enough in there we can get it cranking now this injector tester came with uh, two different lines, so it will actually work on most injectors that I know of. There, there probably are some out there that you're going to have to make your own fitting for, but I will say this, I had to run this nut, um, I had to run this nut way down on there to get it to work. So the way this works is you got a you got a knob here that when you tighten this it turns off the gauge because when you're testing injectors you want to give them a pretty good shock load you want to uh, you want to hear them chirp after you verify that they're got a good spray pattern um, what you do is you loosen this and then you can check your leak off pressures. So I'm going to set you right there, I think you'll be able to see what's going on. I just got a tin can here to, you don't want to put your hand like this under these. It'll inject diesel right into you and got a little air in the system. So it's going to take, oh, I got a bad leak. See that? <laughs> Something, something failed. That didn't even seal at all. That's, that's no bueno. Okay, so back to, i just take it loose here. It comes off easier. Back to square one. 
Maybe I need to tighten that more, I don't know. I'm gonna pull it back apart though and look at it. It could have another cracked collar in there. So, I'll set this aside. I don't know what happened there. Maybe I forgot something. The problem with me and YouTube videos is when I start talking to the camera, I forget what I'm doing. It's not a good thing. So some days I just come out here and I just do stuff without cameras because I get more done. <laughs> You'd think I'd get used to it. I always talk to myself, but when I'm talking to myself, it seems different than when I'm talking to the camera, so I don't know. I'm wondering what we got going on here. Surely I got all the rings in there, right? Well, it's kind of hard to tell now, isn't it? Bottom one stayed in place. So this was the piece that was cracked on the other that was causing a leak, I thought, and it could be that I just need some new ceiling washers, but I don't see a crack in this one. But I figure, you know, I might take I'm going to take that and kind of run it on a uh, whetstone, figure eight pattern on a whetstone. Granted, it's not a surface plate. It will clean it up a little bit. I guess I could show you what I'm doing here. But when I say a figure eight pattern, the reason you do that is it keeps your it keeps you from rounding off the corners, and you might rotate it once in a while. So you're, it's hard to have a perfect pattern. You can see here I'm kind of not really doing that good. But that's shining up a little bit there. We'll see if it works. May, may not. Kind of like patting your head and rubbing your tummy at the same time. This is a whetstone made for me by a guy named Jonathan Coe. Who used to watch some of my videos, I guess. Maybe he still does, but it's a nice whetstone. Uh, I've probably not treated it the way I should. But... I enjoy having it around. It needs cleaned up a little bit. When you live out in the country and you live in a windy Oklahoma, you get a lot of dust. And if you don't have things covered up, they get coated in dust. Adds to the grit, I figure, on a whetstone. So that feels a lot better. Probably the piece I really need to be doing is this one right here. Because this very well could be the one that's causing the trouble. I'm going to have to do it on a table though. You know, I just got to thinking I've got a better one. Why don't we use it? This is, out of another, this is off another injector. Same part. So it's not, it doesn't look bad at all there. So let's use it. Let's just put that one together. So, all right, what did I do with my parts? There's that. Here's the nozzle. And my washer's already in the bottom, so. And I know I'm not as clean as a diesel shop would be, but this is a junk injector. This thing's likely not gonna, it's probably not gonna work anyway, to be honest with you, but thought we'd give it a try since we got a tester. 
So washer there, washer there. Let's get this spacer. I think International built a lot of their early systems or cells, the, the diesel injection systems. Um, Caterpillar did too. And I think it had to do with they were designing things around wartime when Germany, which was the leader of diesel tech back then, when you're at war with them, I guess you can't, or maybe it's just not polite to use German stuff, I don't know. I'm sure, I'm sure there's somebody out there that knows more about that than I do. And I don't think it matters which way these go, they'll go in the dozer either direction. Um, this is just a bleeder screw for bleeding, which is kind of cool. Um, a lot of diesels you have to crack lines on a international, that's what these are made for. They're made for bleeding the fuel system. We'll give this another try here. Screwed up on this one. Um, these have to run a long ways in on this injector. because the way they're made, I didn't think at first it was going to work at all. This one's kind of tight too. As long as it'll tighten up enough to seal there, which I think I want to run it that way. That should work. So we're going to give her another try here. I used to test these injectors with a porta power. I had an old cheap four ton porta power and I'd set up a gauge on it. But the problem I had was I went to use it a while back and all the seals were gone. They blew out. So we're going to know here pretty quick if that even worked. Ah, we're not leaking out the top, but we got a... That's working a little better. So you hear that noise? what you want to hear. A chirp. This one might actually clean up and work. I don't know. I wanted to try to get one working before I pulled one out. Um, that way I can swap them. If I come up to pressure, let's see what she does. So I'm gonna open the valve for the gauge and come on. Now these are a fairly low pressure um, outfit. You can see it's leaking off, but where's it leaking to? It's actually holding about 400 pounds probably there. That's about six. Starts to crack there about 800. But then it 
it leaks back down. I don't know if it's filling up this chamber with diesel. It may have a slow leak in here. Or the check valve on this pump is not 100%. <laughs> it's made in China and uh, it's not a high quality American made or German made um, What am I trying to say? Did I doubt Chinese quality? Well, they don't have the best track record. You can see there, I got her up to about six, that's 700 pounds. It's holding kinda, dropping off a little bit. But you can see when it just starts to crack, it dribbles. Kind of, kind of one of them old man problems, I think, maybe, dribbles. But if we dry that tip out and we look at it, yeah, it's making diesel there. So the thing is, this nozzle may work better than the one that's in the dozer that's missing. And that's kind of what I wanted to look at. But apparently I didn't, I didn't do a very good job lapping that seat. I don't know that you can actually do that because those little pieces of injector nozzle are super hard and uh, probably, it'd probably take a little work to get them working right. So at least I know I can make it seal at the top where the insides are sealing. Um, and I may take this nozzle back out one more time. And um, what I did is I just took the spring off, ran it in the, I put a drill, chucked it up in a drill and just held it by hand. And a little bit of lapping compound for, for valves, which is probably not the right stuff to use, but I thought maybe it would uh, clean up enough, it'd work. But let me pop it off a few more a few more times here. I'm gonna turn this off. It might get better with a little bit of use. I don't know. We'll see here. Sometimes things get to wear in a little bit. Whoops. So I got 800 pounds at crack, which I think, I think 800 probably about what they're supposed to have, but it's still Still making moisture. She's wet. I might have made this one worse. Probably needs a new nozzle, which I kind of figured it did, but now she's dribbling even worse. It won't even hold. It got worse. I made it worse.
So. Well, that's no bueno. It's leaking worse, I think, than it was before. We start to crack about 800, but our crack is not great. It's kind of a stream. See how it just kind of shoots out. It should do more of the chatter right off the bat. So I have to hit it harder to get it to do that. If I just push slowly, she just kind of dribbles. These engines run 1800 RPM, so this thing on the on the dozer it would be running. Um, what would that be? 1800 be, be shooting nine. This this injector would shoot 900 times a minute. I'm not that fast, probably. But yeah, we're. We didn't gain nothing there. But anyway, I just kind of wanted to show you my injector tester. And this is something I've wanted to get for a lot of years. I don't know if this is a good choice, but it was pretty cheap. Um, a good injector tester would probably run you five or six hundred dollars. This one's about 80 bucks. So I thought I'd give her a try. Vivor did not give me this free. I bought this. I didn't want to have to do a video on it just for them. I wanted to... Sometimes they send me things and they say, well, we need a video made on this. Well, that works out great if it's something I actually need or actually use. So the offers they send me are usually of things I don't really want to use or need. So then I have to make myself make a video. If they had sent me this free, sure, would have made a video. But, like I say, I'm a little concerned uh, when you're using test equipment. Sometimes you need to test your test equipment to see if it's actually right. But it's, it's working well enough I can see I've got issues with this injector. So I'm not going to fault the tester yet. Um, I think it's probably a decent investment for me. Anyway, investment, 80 bucks. If I, if I use it three times, it probably paid for itself right there. So, you know, it's 80 bucks. So, I'm going to pull this injector back apart. And I'm going to think about that nozzle a little bit more. I may just need to buy one. Anyway, that's the video for today. Um, sorry, it's not a... Well, I don't know. I, to me, this is interesting stuff. This is an injector that was rusted up pretty badly, and I've used it in my ultrasonic cleaner. This one has parts stuck inside of it that I'm not sure I can get out. This nozzle here is probably in way worse shape than the one I'm working on. But I put this in the press. I tried pressing that out. And I bent a socket. So it's in there pretty good. But you can see the before, I should have took a before shot of this, but this thing was covered in rust. And I mean that ultrasonic works really well getting rid of rust. Um, I will say this, it does do surface damage to some, some parts I don't think it's good to use um, ultrasonics on. If you got a coating, if you got a, like your tools, um, I put a pair of channel locks in there and it took the, it's got, they got kind of a protective coating on the, on the jaws. It, it kind of took that off and now they rust a little bit, but that's not that big a deal. Anyway, if you ever wanted to see what's inside a TD-15 injector, these are also the same on the TD-14s, TD-9s. All the early TD diesels, well, the, the 
all the early internationals, I believe, used these. Um, I will say this, they're harder than heck to get out of that engine. And me and my dad, I remember working on it, and you can see how that one's been beat. <laughs> this is the one we pulled out of the dozer, and took a lot of beat, and I think eventually we ended up building a, uh, I think I ended up building a, a slide hammer, but I can't, I can't remember what I did with it or if it even survived. But I have been firing up the dozer and I have been soaking it down with uh, sea foam. I've been spraying around the injector and sea foam seems to kind of soak in. So I'm kind of hoping maybe I can, through a few heat cycles, uh, I'll get that working. But also, Let's just go out there. So the TD's sitting here. Um, my steering clutch did come undone. Um, by tying that lever back, I think that did help. It wasn't stuck bad enough that it actually stayed stuck. So I was really happy about that. So we got a dozer that turns now. It runs and steers. But we'll uh, we'll fire it up. All right, pull the compression, throttle down, turn the key on, turn on the gas. Little choke.
Well, I just realized when I was trying to edit the video, I didn't have sound. Now I got sound in a dog. Roxy! Yeah. So, I didn't really show you the controls or how they worked or the seat. Okay, the seat's basically a... At this point, it's a plastic tub. So, let's fire it back up. Key on. Goodness. Roxy is on the dozer. Yeah, she's dozer dog. Come over here. Come over here. There you go. Alright. So I'm gonna show you how this thing works. We got <clears throat> compression release. We got the key on. <laughs> Come here, dog. The dog don't know what she's doing. Easy. Thought I had it neutral.
moved a little bit more. Easy. Easy.
see our back exhaust is cleaned up our front has not um, whenever you whenever you're not using this machine you're supposed to put it in neutral and engage the clutch this is a hand clutch a dry clutch it's behind the engine that releases it disengages it you got your gear shift you got one two three four five six you got forward and reverse you got your right clutch you got your left clutch throttle blade control and you got your uh, cable unit control that's up that's down up down so when you're sitting here idle you got your clutch engaged this is going to spin so different disengage the clutch that stops um, read the warning right here you're supposed to put the clutch engaged in neutral on your island shut her down you push the throttle all the way down um, number three injector is the one I think is the problem I don't think it's uh, doing it right something ain't right with it it's either a valve adjustment or it's the injector so I'm gonna investigate that but what I've been doing here lately is I'll fire this thing up and run it a little bit. I'll spray uh, sea foam, which is a penetrant oil, around the injectors because <clears throat> those are pretty tough to get out if they haven't been out in a long time. So somewhere back here, we've got an injector that sticks. For, it it doesn't really do the job until it gets warmed up after it warms up it does fine number three on the other hand is not working um, I've tried warming it up granted I, I'm not able to use a blade yet because I've still got a drive shaft issue on the hydraulic pump after I get that fixed maybe I could push some dirt maybe I can get it warmed up enough to actually quit missing but I think, I don't know if it's the injector or I really want to pull the valve covers and do the valves on it just to check the clearances. Um, there is a valve inside these that opens up when you're doing the start on gas. And if it's not closing off completely whenever you run on diesel, it could cause it to miss. So that's kind of where I'm at on it uh, at this moment uh, steering clutches are working uh, steering brakes are working everything's working except for I don't have the pump drive um, drive shaft and I've got at least probably two bolts that are sheared off inside the uh, all the balancer pulley and uh, I need a u-joint and a few other little bits and pieces so i'll probably have to drop the belly pan to get that to get access to that hopefully it'll work out and